Welcome to Kingdom Now. I'm John Carmichael, and today we are going to be releasing a powerful revelation concerning your marriage. And we want to believe God with you. We're going to be looking at a story found in the book of Genesis, especially chapter 29, in which Jacob was married to Rachel and to Leah. And the marriage between Jacob and Leah, it had started out rough. It was not destined in the natural for success. But I want to show you from the Word of God how that God turned that around. God wants to turn your marriage around. And I believe over the next few minutes and the next few programs, you're going to get some information of how to walk into a miracle in your marriage. Maybe you're not even married and you're believing God for a spouse. You're going to get information that I believe is going to help you pick the right spouse, be able to have information that God can use in your life to turn your marriage around or to give you the marriage that you're believing God for. So you want to make sure that you're watching, get a pencil and piece of paper, and it's going to be a powerful revelation in your life. So don't go away. Kingdom Now. We'll be right back. I promise to love, honor, and respect you. I promise to love, cherish, and protect you from this day forward till death do us part. I remember our wedding day. It was awesome. I mean, my dress was gorgeous and all of the flowers were so beautiful. And everybody that I loved was there, you know, all of my family. And the day was just amazing. I mean, it was good. It was really, really good. And there was this moment right before I walked down the aisle and I remembered looking up to God and just feeling so thankful for this man that he had given me. I was scared to death. Seriously, I thought I was going to pee my pants. I mean, I don't usually get in front of people like that, let alone wearing a tux. <laughs> Come on. I, I forgot to go to the bathroom before the ceremony started, and, and I kept thinking, don't pee yourself, and don't lock your knees, and keep breathing. And then all of a sudden, I looked up, and there she was. She took my breath away, and I never wanted it back. Our honeymoon was amazing. I mean, we went to a tropical island and it was just a whole week of relaxing and we got to walk on the beach a lot and just spend time together. We were just so in love. We went to the street vendors, you know, and, and we were looking around at stuff and we didn't have a lot of money, but I picked up this amber necklace and I put it up against her skin and I knew she had to have it because she was worth it. And, and then, then we, we went, went home. home. Once we got home, it was like something strange started to happen. I mean, it was like aliens came into our bedroom, scooped out his brain, and filled it with gummy bears. Oh, honey, are those your dirty dishes in the sink? Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, you know we have a dishwasher, right? What? Yeah, yeah, and you're really good at it too, sweetheart. Um, could you not interrupt me when I'm watching TV, or at least wait till commercial? You see what I mean? Gummy bears. After the honeymoon, I had a sneaking suspicion that she was sneaking out at night and taking night classes at some college on some foreign language because everything she said made zero sense. Do you like this shirt on me? Yeah, looks good. So you don't like the color? What? If you don't like the color, just say you don't like the color. I mean, I don't even know why I try to look nice for you. <laughs> Wait, what just happened here? Why don't you think I'm pretty? Why? Well, hold on, I do think you're pretty. Well, you never say it. I'm sorry, I think you're pretty. Well, you can't say it now. I just told you to say it. I mean, what? that totally doesn't even count. But wait, how am I supposed to know what I'm supposed to say unless you tell me what I'm supposed to say? I can't believe you don't love me anymore. I wonder some days what I ever saw in him. Did you know, in the mornings when she wakes up, <laughs> her breath will melt your face off? Well, I wouldn't have to act like his mother if he didn't act like a child. I mean, close the refrigerator door, pick up your shoes, take out the garbage. Seriously, how hard is it to obey? She can't cook. <laughs> I think she's slowly trying to poison me with her food. Okay, two words. Road rage. Two words. Shopaholic. Have I mentioned he still has his comic book collection from junior high? Did I mention that she still makes fun of me for having a comic book collection from junior high? He's addicted to television. She's addicted to purses. And I don't understand this, but for some reason she manages to lose every purse she owns in the house. Seriously, how hard is it to lose something this big? I thought we were supposed to be on the same team. 
Uh, I'm still on the same team. Apparently you defected, started playing for some other team that you made up in your mind. That doesn't even make any sense. Well, you don't make any sense. Well, your gummy bears don't make any sense. Oh, you're stupid. Well, you're stupid. Well, you made me this way. Ah! Today, I want to share with you a powerful message. I've entitled the message, Lying Ugly, The Miracle of Marriage. We're going to be looking at marriage. We're going to look at a story that might surprise you found in the marriage between Jacob and Leah. And so I'm going to ask if you would open up your Bibles to the book of Genesis. And we're going to look at several scriptures. But I want you to start out at Genesis 29:31 because I'm going to look at a marriage that most people would say was doomed from the very beginning. Many of you watching today, maybe you are struggling in your marriage, and I want to encourage you to make sure that you watch this episode of the program and, and the subsequent ones in the next couple of weeks, because we're going to be looking at what God's Word says about marriage. We're going to look at how God turned the marriage around for Jacob and Leah, and what I believe is going to happen over the next couple of weeks, several weeks, is that God is going to give you information so that He can turn your marriage around. You know, a lot of people go into marriage with a lot of ideas. Many people have this fairy tale idea of a, this romantic thing that they read about in some book or saw in a movie, only to find that real marriage is quite a bit different than anything that you'll read in a book or see in a movie. Uh, we talk about how that sometimes we marry Prince Charming only to find out that he turns into a frog. We think we met Cinderella and she turns into Cruella de Vil. But the fact of the matter is simply this, is that regardless of where your marriage is, maybe you're on the extreme and your marriage is in extreme trouble and needs help, or maybe you're sitting here today and you say, well, my marriage is fine, but, but it can always improve. Today, I believe that we can look at the Word of God and find that God has some answers for any marriage, regardless of wherever it is today, how it got started out, and I'm telling you, even if there's been some drastic things that have happened that have hurt your marriage, friends, I want to tell you that God has given us the prescription for how we can get our marriage healed from the Word of God. That's one of the great points of kingdom now is that we believe that God can begin to do things in our life right now today. I'm sure you've got your Bible, a notepad and a, a piece of paper and a pen because I want you to jot down some notes. And, and you're going to have to follow the next few programs to get the entire message. And we'll give you information about how you can get this in your home. But there in the book of Genesis 29, 31, it gives us a little glimpse as to what the marriage looked like with Jacob and Leah. Of course, we know that he married Rachel first. And it says in verse 31, When the Lord saw that Leah was unloved, he opened her womb, but Rachel was barren. So here in Genesis 29, 31, we see the story. You've got two women. We've got Rachel, who was loved, and Leah, who was unloved, the Bible says right there. Well, what happened? Well, those of you who may be unfamiliar with the story, Jacob was working for Laban, and as he was working there, he had said that, I want to marry Rachel. Rachel was the younger of the two sisters. And so he worked for uh, Rachel only to find out that on the wedding night, that after the wedding, he hadn't married Rachel, but in fact, he had been deceived and had married Leah because she was the firstborn. Now, the Bible says some interesting things about Rachel and Leah, and many there's some discussion as to what it means. Some people typically mean, think that it means that Rachel was pretty and that Leah was I'm, I'm, doesn't use the word ugly, but maybe not as pretty. And some people have said that maybe she was ugly. And there's some discussion as to really if that's what the Bible said or not. But the issue that, I, just for sake of argument, we call this message lying ugly. Because in the story of the marriage of Jacob and Leah, 
you're going to find that Jacob was a liar and, and so was Leah in a lot of ways and that, that Leah would be ugly. And so you would look at a marriage that is going to start out with deception, going to start out marrying somebody that he didn't think was very pretty, and yet um, we're going to see something is going to take place that gives us indication that Jacob's heart turned. God worked in the marriage of Jacob and Leah. And you say, Pastor John, why do you believe that when it says here in Genesis 29, 31, that the Lord saw that Leah was unloved and he opened her womb, but Rachel was barren? Well, if you'll flip over in your Bible to the book of Genesis chapter 49, verse 31, Genesis 49, 31 this is near the end of Jacob's life. Now, we're talking about marriage. We're talking about how that God can turn any marriage around, regardless of how it started, I believe, regardless of even what's happened. And look at this. This is Jacob talking. He says, there, talking at the end of his life, he's talking about a place of burial. He says, there they buried Abraham and Sarah, his wife, and there they buried Isaac and Rebecca, his wife, and then notice what he says, and there I buried Leah. Jacob, when Leah died at the end of their life, at near the end of their life, when Leah finally died, the Bible says, Jacob talking, he says, I personally buried Leah with his father his mother, his grandfather, his grandmother. Now, the place of this burial was not small. And we know that, that um, there was room for him not just to bury Leah there with, with his grandpa and with his grandma and his dad and his mother, but there was room for him to bury both Rachel and Leah. Well, he, we know where he buried Leah. Where did he bury Rachel? Well, you look back a, a few, several verses or chapters back, we see that in chapter 35, we see the death of Rachel. And when Rachel died, he did not take Rachel to the family burial place. He could have. The law or the ordinances was that he could have, or the, of that day, he could have buried and transported Rachel. Well, why did Rachel not enter into the same burial place as Leah? Well, we don't know the exact answer, but we can uh, begin to draw some conclusions. Number one, when Rachel died, some people say, well, maybe it was a distance issue. No, that wasn't the issue because Rachel died about 15 to 20 miles away from the burial ground of where Abraham was, where Isaac was, so that distance would be about a day's journey. It would have taken just a day's journey for Jacob to bring Rachel, who many people would consider his preferred wife, bring his preferred wife to the burial ground. He didn't do that. No, the Bible says that when Rachel died, he buried her right there beside the road. He didn't carry her. Something took place, we don't know exactly what it was, but something took place between the marriage of Jacob and Rachel that caused him to change his heart. He didn't love Rachel as much. And we know that the Bible says that God spoke to Jacob and says that until you love Leah, I'm not going to open Rachel's womb. And we know that God op opened Rachel's womb. So something took place in Jacob's heart, that his heart turned toward Leah, where at first he loved Rachel. He didn't love Leah. Now, something happened. When Rachel began to con uh, conceive and bear children, we know that something took place within Jacob's heart that now he also loved Leah. And I'm not going to say that he didn't love Rachel, and, but I'm, what I'm going to say is that something took place in Jacob's heart.
You're watching Kingdom Now. The message in which you're listening to today is called Lion Ugly, the Miracle Marriage. And I want to give this message to you free of charge. Email us at info at evangelnorth.net. That's I-N-F-O at evangelnorth.net. Give us your name and address and we will rush a copy of this message to you that could be a blessing to you or maybe you know someone whose marriage is in trouble and they need help. I believe that information found within this message can turn that marriage around. You can also call us at 502-413-0115, dial extension 2, and leave your name and information and we will give this to you. But also, for a gift of any size, if you believe in the message of Kingdom Now and can help us, we want to also, in addition to giving you the message, The Miracle Marriage, we want to also give you a book called uh, Seven Characteristics of a Godly Marriage. It's written by Dr. Bob Rogers. And if you will give us that information, your information at the email address or by phone, we're going to give this to you for a gift of any size. It's a way of saying thank you for supporting Kingdom Now. Now, Kingdom Now can be seen here at 21.3 The Light, or you can go online at WBNA21.com, click The Light, and then scroll down the ministries. You'll see Kingdom Now with Evangel North Church, and you can share this with people, and I encourage you to do it. Let people know about the program. Let people know on your Facebook, your Twitter, whatever social media that you have in your life, because if it's been a blessing to you, let it be a blessing to somebody else. So help us share the word, Kingdom Now, present it to your family and friends, and we want to thank you for watching. We know that something took place within Jacob's heart that now he also loved Leah. And I'm not going to say that he didn't love Rachel, and, but I'm, what I'm going to say is that something took place in Jacob's heart that turned this marriage that would be destined, hear me, destined to fail, destined to, to uh, never become what it needed to become, but yet God turned that marriage around that in the end when Rachel died he buried her on Jacob buried her on the road when Leah died he brought her to the family burial ground and personally as an act of love as an act of devotion something took place and he loved Leah now, friends, what I want to tell you is this, is that there is something that began to take place in that marriage. Something turned that around. There are principles that I believe are found within the, the, the marriage of Jacob and Leah, where God turned something that was based on a lie, based on ugliness, based on deception, based on lack of preference, and God turned it around that in the end, it became something beautiful and became something that you and I can look at to say, okay, Father, how can you turn my marriage around? Because some people are in marriages today and you believe that your marriage is destined for divorce or maybe destined for a, like a, a life sentence of jail, a life sentence of negativity, a life sentence of nothing can get any better, that there's no hope, that there's no way my life can be better. I counsel people many days throughout the week, and over that counseling time, I talk to marriages after marriages that are damaged, that are at a point of hopelessness, a point of despair, but friends, I'm telling you that from the Word of God, there are promises and principles. I want to say that one more time. There are promises and principles that if you and I will learn to grab a hold of them, healing can come to our marriage. Strength can come to our marriage. Hope can come to our marriage. And it's found in the Word of God. So the first point I want to make to you 
when you are believing God for your marriage, and, and really this is outside of my notes that I'm going to share with you, is that you simply are going to have to trust that God has an answer. You're going to have to trust that God wants to do something in your, in your marriage. You've got to trust that God can, that He will. The message of Kingdom Now, this program, is that God can work in your life and in your marriage today, right now, can begin to be the turnaround point in your marriage in the name of Jesus. And I truly believe that. And I want you to be in faith over these next few weeks as we are looking at this subject that you're going to begin to see a miracle take place in your marriage. So what is it? What are some principles that we can learn from Jacob and Leah's marriage? Where at the beginning it was based on a lie, it was based on deception, it was based on him thinking another girl was prettier. And how did it turn around? How did it go to the point now that it, uh, it became the preferred marriage? How did it go from being the not preferred marriage to the preferred marriage? Well, number one, and this is going to be important for you and I, and I want you to pay extra close attention to this, and we're going to look at some scriptures, so I hope you have your Bibles ready because we're going to look at some things. But number one is you have to set an anchor point. You have to set a point in your marriage that you're not going to move from. And what I simply mean is this, is that if divorce is an option in your marriage, you're going to exercise that option. If you believe that, that, you're, that, you, that your marriage um, has an option or an exit clause to get out of it, you at some point, at some point, you're going to fulfill that exit clause. For too many marriages, divorce is an option. And friends, I'm going to tell you that before you can walk in the miracle in your marriage, you're going to have to set the same anchor point that God has. In fact, that's what we're looking at is how to receive supernatural help in your marriage. How are you going to have the power of God to, to move in your marriage. And the first thing you're going to have to do is set this anchor point. You're going to have to, to come into alignment with God's attitude and God's prescription for your marriage. And the first thing you're going to have to, to know is that God hates divorce. God hates divorce. In the book of Malachi chapter 2 verse 16, and if you have your Bibles, I want you to turn to that scripture. Malachi chapter 2 verse 16, it says, For the Lord God of Israel says, He hates divorce. Now that's pretty strong language. For God, who is a God of love, to look at an activity, many of us know of activities that God says, I hate, sins that we know that God says, I hate that and I hate this. You and I need to know that the Bible says God hates divorce. Now, many of you are in marriages and, and, and you need divine help. You want God to come in. Oh, that was a powerful revelation that I know that God is using in your life. And I'm just praying that it's been a blessing to you. And I know that it can be a blessing to many people. And I want to make something available to you. This message is entitled, Lion Ugly, The Miracle Marriage, in which Jacob and Leah had a marriage that was destined to fail, doomed to destruction, but yet somehow, someway, God turned it around. There's principles found within this message. Lie and Ugly, the miracle mar marriage that God was able to, to give to you and I to turn our marriage around or maybe to give us information on who we're to choose if we're single. So I want to give this to you free of charge. I'm asking you if you would to email us, info, that's info at evangelnorth.net, info at evangelnorth.net or you can call us. 
502-413-0115, dial extension 2, and we will have someone to answer that phone, or you can leave a message, and what we will need is your name and address, and we will be able to send this message to you, lying ugly. It can help you, it can help your marriage, or maybe you want to sow it into somebody else's life that can help them. And so if you will contact us, we will rush you this message and it'll be a great blessing. Now, for those of you who can help us for a gift of any size, I want to, in addition to that, I want to give you a book by Dr. Bob Rogers called Seven Characteristics of a Godly Marriage. This book has been influential in helping people. It will be a great guide to go right along with the message, Lying Ugly. This book that Pastor Bob wrote uh, is going to give you keys that's going to be able to help your marriage. And for a gift of any size, we're going to give this, we're going to send this to you. You can use the same information. Email us at info, that's info at evangelnorth.net, or call us, 502 502- 413-0115, dial extension 2, leave us your name and address, and we will get these to you, and we want to thank you for supporting. Of course, you can also go online to give and give the same information. If you'll go to evangelnorth.net, evangelnorth.net, and click the online giving button, and if you will put in the notes, uh, Lying uh, Ugly, The Miracle Marriage, Lying Ugly, The Miracle Marriage, put in there that you watch the Kingdom Now show. We will know that you're giving for this, and we will give this to you, and it'll be a great blessing to your life. I also want to encourage you to come out uh, to Evangel North Church, located in Clarksville, Indiana. Our address is 1732 Thames Drive. 1732 Thames Drive there in Clarksville. It's right off of the Veterans Parkway and Green Tree Boulevard. You'll recognize the Bass Pro Shop there in Clarksville. Our service times are Sunday at 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. and Wednesday nights at 7. And we encourage you to come at Evangel North Church. We believe you belong. You'll see that phrase mentioned several times at the church. We just believe that God wants people to be able to come to a body of believers, and we believe that Evangel North will be a great blessing to you, great ministries for you, for your family, opportunities for you to activate your gifts, your talents, and your interests, for you to belong with small groups and begin to cultivate your walk with God at Evangel North. Again, we encourage you to come out Sundays and Wednesdays and it'll be a great blessing to you. It's been our honor to bring to you Kingdom Now. It's been Ministry of Evangel North Church and I know that it's been a great blessing to you. We encourage you to share this with people at Facebook, Twitter, your family, your friends. You can view it right here on uh, Channel 21.3 The Light. You can go online WBNA21.com Click on the light, and then you can scroll down the ministries, view this program anytime that way. God bless you, and thank you for watching Kingdom Now.